All things considered, Kentucky basketball's draw in the NCAA tournament is actually not that bad. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Daw. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's draw in the NCAA tournament. I think it's actually pretty good. Going to dive into my thoughts on the potential matchups, the first game of the round of 64 against Oakland, and just my entire opinion on the tournament as a whole. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you are watching on YouTube or on podcast, please subscribe to the show. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business, and that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. The NCAA tournament bracket has been released as of about 20 minutes ago. They released the entire NCAA tournament bracket. Just want to remind you guys, if you want to join the Locked On Kentucky Bracket Challenge group over on ESPN, the link is in the description on both podcast and on YouTube. All you have to do is click the link and join with your email. It is free. I think we've got, what, 40 people in there now. Would love to have you guys in there as well to fill out your brackets and let me know what you think is going to happen in the NCAA tournament. We will start here with the Kentucky Wildcats and their draw in the south region of the bracket. To be completely honest with you, all things considered, it's not the worst draw in the world. It's actually pretty favorable, all things considered. It's not the easiest, I think, and it's definitely not the hardest on this this bracket. We'll get to the east region uh, in a little bit, but uh, Kentucky, despite what Joe Lenardi said, despite what Jerry Palm said about the Wildcats essentially all season long, Kentucky is not a five seed. They're not a four seed. Kentucky is a three seed in the South region, and they will be taking on, in their first game, Oakland. They will be taking on Oakland in their first matchup. Uh, I've actually got Oakland. I've been looking at Oakland, uh, the the Golden Grizzlies. For some reason, I wanted to say Bears. The Golden Grizzlies. Um, For quite some time now, in, in case you did not tune in a few episodes ago, I did a segment talking about some teams that I think Kentucky on paper would prefer to see in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And Oakland was one of the teams that I mentioned. Actually, I think it might have been the first team uh, that I highlighted here, the uh, the Golden Grizzlies. And it's not to say Oakland is a bad team. Anything can happen in this tournament. Kentucky could absolutely lose this first round game. But if we're looking at just the stats on paper, I actually kind of like this draw to start here for the Kentucky Wildcats. Out of the Horizon League, the Golden Grizzlies actually won the Horizon League tournament. It's a pretty weak strength of schedule overall considering just how weak their conference is, but their non-conference slate was actually pretty dang strong. And their best win of the season, uh, I think it's pretty clear here just looking at their schedule, is a win over Xavier on the road. That's a top 60 team, according to Kim Palm. They narrowly lost to Drake. Uh, they narrowly lost to Illinois at the beginning of the season, lost by six to Ohio State in their first game of the season. So they played a few different teams here that are pretty good competitively, and they were really hot to end the year. Oakland, despite some deficiencies on paper, which we'll talk about later on the sh- in the show, I think is is one of the best 14 seeds that Kentucky could have gotten. I am super happy that Kentucky did not end up with McNeese State, who rose all the way to a 12 seed. I'm also very happy that they did not end up with somebody like Moorhead State, Akron, or Colgate as 14 seeds, I think would have been more difficult matchups for the Wildcats. I think this is probably the best 14 seed Kentucky could have gotten. Now, again, I want to reiterate... Kentucky could absolutely lose this game with how volatile and how chaotic they have been all season long. 
Kentucky could absolutely lose this first round game, which is going to be happening on Sunday. Or excuse, excuse me, I don't know why I said Sunday. It's today's Sunday. It's going to be happening on Thursday later on this week. So make sure you're subbed up to the, to the show, by the way. Going to have previews, going to have recaps, going to have all different sorts of thoughts on this matchup leading up to it. But Kentucky, all things considered, first game, not that bad. Then you get to your second matchup, potentially, between either Texas Tech or NC State. Texas Tech, so far this season, if I am not mistaken, has been riddled with injuries. Warren Washington has been hurt. Devin Cambridge only played eight games. Transfer there from Auburn. That was one of their uh, more prominent players. Uh, Darian Williams has also had some injury concerns. Overall, this is a pretty balanced team. Really good three-point shooting team that plays pretty slow. Finished with an 11-7 record in in Big 12 play. Not bad, all things considered. They play pretty good defense. They prevent teams from getting to the foul line. They're a decent uh, offensive rebounding team in Big 12 play. They really struggled in that category, though. But overall, Texas Tech, good team. Team that could definitely beat Kentucky uh, if if things were to uh, if if the the uh, they were were to match up, I should say. But Texas Tech is going to be playing uh, what a lot of people are probably going to say is the most difficult eleven seed, and this is where <laughs> this is where the problems start. NC State is your eleven seed in the South region. In case you don't know, NC State, who finished the year actually nine and eleven in conference play. 17 and 14. They lost four straight games, five out of their last four, six out of their last eight to end the regular season. Weren't playing very good basketball. Had to play five games in five days in the ACC tournament. They won them all, beat North Carolina in the ACC championship game. And they come into this bracket hot after going to that neutral site, beating Louisville, beating Syracuse beating Duke, Virginia, and North Carolina in consecutive games. They're really good, and they are led by one of the most, I'm just laughing at some of these different, just the situation that we're in. They are led by one of the most fascinating players in college basketball, DJ Burns. If you thought South Carolina's BJ Mack was a sight to behold, allow me to introduce you to number 30 for NC State, 6'9", 275-pound senior, who takes 28.7% of the shots that are up when or that are put up when he's on the floor. He is their most utilized player. He actually has their best assist rate at tw- almost 25%, which is hilarious that he is that good. He has a decent block percentage and he's he's pretty effective around the rim as well. He does a decent job of drawing fouls. He's a really fascinating player to watch, man. He can distribute the rock. He's interesting to watch in the post. Uh, 6'9", 275 uh, would put a uh, would 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 take Kentucky's guys out to work. I mean that that would be just a fascinating, entertaining matchup to watch there. NC State though is your 11 seed. I would lean towards the Wolf Pack facing Kentucky in the round of 32. That's a fascinating game. If you get past the first two rounds, I have a lot of confidence in Kentucky basketball. It, with with the draw, maybe potentially making a run through this region. It is, I think, I would argue, the second easiest region out of this bracket. And for Kentucky, man, if they can if they can get past those first couple of games, that's what it's all about. Just getting hot, you could find yourself in a favorable spot. Let's continue to dive into what we see in this region, kind of what we think about the matchups here for the Kentucky Wildcats. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a Nissan Armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after dominating the Big 12 title game against the Houston Cougars. 
You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop all different variety uh, uh, variety of SUVs over at NissanUSA.com. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. It is your destination for sports from live game highlights to in-depth analysis. They offer amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television. It provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the NCAA tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. You can keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports from March Madness to NBA to the MLB and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you have not checked them out, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That is Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, continuing along here on the Sunday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Selection Sunday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Greatly appreciate you guys tuning into the show today to kind of preview Kentucky basketball's draw in the NCAA tournament. Got two things for you here real quick. First of all, let me know what you think about Kentucky basketball's draw in the comments below. Do you think it is easy? Do you think it's difficult? Do you think it's kind of middle of the road? Eh, some good things, some bad things. Whatever your thoughts are, you can leave them in the YouTube comments below if you're watching there. If you're listening on podcast at Locked on UK, it's where you can find me on Twitter. And one more reminder for you guys, if you have not joined the Locked on Kentucky Tournament Bracket Challenge, you should absolutely do that over on ESPN. The link is in the description uh, where any of you guys can join. It is free. Would love to have you guys join up. So, Kentucky basketball facing off against Oakland. In their first round matchup on March 21st, just four days from now, three seed versus 14 seed facing off against either Texas Tech or NC State in the round of 32. And then you are facing off against one of five teams. That's right, one of five, not one of four. You are facing off against either Florida as a seven seed. Colorado, Boise State in the play-in game for the first four as 10 seeds. Two-seeded Marquette or 15-seed Western Kentucky. Florida, I think, will be a difficult matchup, but Florida is struggling just a little bit for what is essentially one semi-big reason and that's the fact that they just lost uh, they, one of their primary centers, Micah Hanglotten, to injury. The transfer from Marshall, who is their best offensive rebounder, actually. He is probably, he, he, he's done for the season um, after a brutal, brutal injury um, against Auburn just three minutes into the SEC championship game. But he is out, so they'll have to rely on Alex Condon and Tyree Samuel there a freshman and a senior at that center position. Uh, two guys that are really good at grabbing offensive rebounds, but not, not as good as Hanglotton was. How does Florida fare in that first round against a spicy Boise State team or against Colorado? Um, that, that, that will be difficult. That, that will be difficult for, for, uh, for the Florida Gators. Boise State, by the way, top 40 in Kimpom. Pretty balanced, really solid defense. They also do a great job of grounding, re- uh, grabbing rebounds themselves. They've got a couple of really solid forwards that can also shoot a little bit. Um, that That's going to be tough, I think, for Florida. And then you look at Marquette, and I, I, I'm i going to say this, and I don't want Big East fans to, by the way, I'm just combing through Ken Palm right now is why I'm, why I'm looking away. Uh, I, I want to say this, and hopefully Big East fans don't take offense to this. Hopefully Marquette fans don't take offense to this. They're, this is a very good team. This is a very good team with two Really, really, really good guards in Tyler Kulik, who is one of the nation's best assist men, and then Cam Jones, who is an excellent shooter, excellent shooter uh, in his own right. Marquette, very good on offense and defense. They may be, all things considered, 
they may be the weakest two seed. Your other two seeds include Tennessee, Iowa State, Arizona, and then you've got Marquette here in the South region. Let's say, for the sake of argument, Kentucky gets to that Sweet 16 against Marquette. I would feel better about Kentucky against Marquette than I would about them against Arizona, against Iowa State, or against Tennessee again, for that matter. That was a tough game that Ten- or that Kentucky won in Knoxville. If I had to choose, I would choose the Vols or the Golden Eagles. I would choose one of those two teams. I think that Marquette here is actually a pretty solid draw if, if Kentucky makes the Sweet 16. Hopefully they do. Hopefully Kentucky makes it a little bit further than that. So Tech, NC State, Oakland, Florida, Colorado, Boise State, Marquette, Western Kentucky is fun as a 15 seed. That's not a bad portion of this of this bracket. Not a bad portion. Then you look at the top half. Your one seed in this region are the Houston Cougars. Houston, excellent defensively, efficient on offense. Not the best interior offense. Not the best free throw shooting team. But they grab second chance points. They don't turn the ball over. And they've got some really high level experience experienced guards. With that being said, they just got blown out in the Big 12 championship game by Iowa State. Just destroyed by the Cyclones. They shot awful from inside and outside of the arc. They turned the ball over. They didn't do a good job rebounding. I mean, they got handled by Iowa State. It's it's the first time this season I've looked at Houston and been like they have like they are human. It's not a guarantee that they run through their region. Now it's going to take it would take a very special performance from somebody in this region to knock them out, but they're not they're not perfect. They face off against Longwood as a 16 seed even though we've seen two 16 seed upsets in the past half decade or so. Nobody's going to look at Longwood or Stetson or Wagner or Howard or Grambling or Montana State, unless they're playing Purdue, and say, okay, this team's going to knock off this one seed. It's just on paper, it's not going to be likely. Houston should win that game. Then they've got a tough game against either Nebraska or Texas A&M, the 8-9 matchup, which that, that is a beefy 8-9 matchup in Memphis. <laughs> that that that, sh- that should be fun. That should be fun. Then you've got Wisconsin and James Madison, which I think is a little bit underrated. Everybody just kind of brushed over that during the selection process. They were just like, oh, look, there's Wisconsin as a five, and then James Madison as a 12. It's like, okay, cool. Wisconsin just made their title game. Um, lost to Illinois in that title game, by the way. JMU, pretty good. Duke's pretty solid. Um, that's upset territory for me. I don't know if a ton of people are going to be eyeing that. I kind of am. Then you've got Vermont and Duke, which is, feels like a matchup I've seen a dozen times at the start of an uh, NCAA tournament. Um, that's a game where Duke should win. Duke's not playing phenomenal. They could they could, they could still win this region. I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, <laughs> all things considered, Houston, Marquette, Duke, Wisconsin, Florida, NC State, I mean, there's some really good teams in here, but it's certainly, it, it, is, it is not the East region. It's not the easiest draw, which I think, quite frankly, uh, came for Purdue. Um, North Carolina also got, it is disgusting how easy North Carolina's like first couple of games are. They'll play, they'll play a 16 seed, then they'll play Mississippi State or Michigan State, and then they'll play either St. Mary's, Grand Canyon, Alabama, or Charleston. Like, are, are we serious? That's what UNC gets. They get, the, they, they get their first two games in Charlotte. It's like, wow. 
So all things considered, I think Kentucky's region, they got some good teams, including the Wildcats. Um, there, there is a path. There is a path here. There's also a world where Kentucky gets bounced in the first round against Oakland. There's a world, there is a world where that happens. Could be the one we're living in. Let's talk a little bit more about this matchup with the Golden Grizzlies. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn. When you are hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to the professionals you can't find anywhere else, and they do all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is super easy when you have all of those quality candidates. It is so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, wrapping up the Sunday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. If you have not subscribed to the show already, please go ahead and do so. Let me know what you think about this draw in the comments below. It's not that bad. At least I don't think it could be a lot worse. Before actually we before we get into some Oakland thoughts, I do um, want to just uh, pull this up here real quick for you guys, just the East region. Uh, this is what we could be dealing with. The East region includes UConn. As the one, Iowa State is the two seed, Illinois is the three seed, Auburn as the four seed, San Diego State is the five, and then FAU is the eight seed, Florida Atlantic as, as an eight seed to potentially face off UConn, BYU with their high flying offense, they're the six, and then there's Moorhead State, there's Drake. <laughs> that that is a that that is literally four different conference tournament champions. Three different teams that were in the Final Four last year. And the committee said, you know what? Let's just cram them all into the same region. That is four top 10 teams on Kimpom. And they chucked them all in the same region. I'll tell you what, this this bracket is weird. The way they ended up doing this, it is weird. That is an extremely tough region. And then you go and look at, obviously, we just talked about the South. Purdue facing off against Tennessee, who can be beat. Um, Creighton, week three seed. I, I, I like the Blue Jays, but it's, I don't know why. It's just bias. I literally don't know why I like them. Um, Kansas, really weak four seed. South Carolina, week six seed, in my opinion. Gonzaga, week five, in my opinion. McNeese State, pretty good. Just saying. Uh, Utah State and TC was the 8-9. I mean, Purdue, unless they completely fall apart like they did a season ago, they should run through this region. Uh, it's also really funny that uh, St. Peter's is the 15th seed in this region, facing off against Tennessee. Uh, I know we're two years removed from this, St. Peter's. From what happened, we don't have to talk about it. Just know that I'll be pulling for you. Very hard. Every step of the way. Go Peacocks. And then you've got the West region. <laughs> Uh, like I mentioned earlier, North Carolina playing Mississippi State or Michigan State. You got St. Mary's as your five, bleh. Alabama, bleh. Clemson, Baylor, Dayton, Arizona. Um, mid on mid on mid. Uh, Arizona's pretty good. Clemson is not that great. New Mexico is 11 seed. Is sneaky. Um, that that is that is a potentially good team that has Jamal Mashburn's son on it. Um, I also think Jamal Earl, uh, Baker Jr.'s son, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe wrong on that. Uh, so, there's your bracket. Definitely going to do our brackets here on the show in a couple of days. But first, let's just let's talk a little bit more about Oakland, about the Oakland Golden Grizzlies, who right now uh, are ranked number 137 in Ken Palm. And some this, some fun fact that you may not know about this. Somebody tagged me uh, on Twitter about this, and I'm ha- I'm going to have to go. And watch this game that they played against Illinois. It's 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 an hour long cut up that somebody sent me. Um, I'm gonna have to go and watch that just to see how they fared against a really good offensive team in Illinois and kind of how they shut them down. Super early 
uh, in the season, but it, it, we're, I'm, I would still definitely want to go check that out. Oakland, though, number 135 in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency. Number 165 in adjusted defensive efficiency. So they are actually above average, slightly above average, in both offense and defense. Let's start here with just the offense. They're one of the slowest teams in the nation. They actually have a pretty decent effective field goal uh, percentage, top 100 there. Top 125 in turnover percentage, top 117 in offensive rebound percentage, which was the big stat that I was looking for here when I pulled their page up uh, before we started the show. They do not do a good job of getting to the foul line, but everything else on offense, they do pretty well at a slow, methodical pace. They also rely on three-pointers more than anything. They have a decent three-point percentage. They have a decent two-point percentage. They have a really good free throw percentage. They don't get blocked. They don't turn it over. They, they grab rebounds. They play efficiently in the pace that they, that they have. And they have a pretty good non-conference slate. Um, most of the games were... Here's the interesting thing. And I looked at Haslam metrics, by the way, before we started the show. I don't have that pulled up right now. Um, that's another analytics website that I really like. Just to kind of see how they felt about the matchup. I just ran it through the system. This game... It said, and I thought about this before before I even looked at Hasla, this game should be like a double-digit win for Kentucky, but it, I don't think it'll be a blowout, if you understand what I'm saying. They, like, they should win by somewhere between 10 to 15, 16 points, but it's not going to be a blowout, and I think that's reflective in most of their tough non-conference matchups. Against Drake, it was close. Against Illinois, they lost by 11. Against Ohio State, they lost by 6. Against Michigan State, they lost by what? Uh, 17, 16 points? Like, it was close. Against Toledo, they lost by 1. Against Cleveland State, who's not terrible, they lost by what? 4 or 5? No, I'm sorry. They, 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 they lost by uh, 7, I think. And, and like I said earlier, they, they beat Xavier. So this team can play competitive against teams outside of their conference also uh, Cleveland State is inside the conference uh, slip up there. Uh, they, they later on then beat Cleveland State in the uh, Horizon League tournament, by the way. But this is not this is not a terrible team, especially against better competition. Looks like they play up a little bit. Their leading their lead uh, player is a forward named Trey Townsend, averages almost seventeen points a game, six foot six, two hundred twenty eight pounds senior. He is utilized on a lot of their possessions. And he actually does a really good job of what the rest of the team struggles with. And that is getting to the foul line. And he shoots 79.5% there. 17 points, almost 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 1.3 steals. While shooting 45.7% from the floor, which is not phenomenal. It's like kind of kind of average. And then almost 35% from 3, which is, which is good. It's not great, but it's good. There are two other, two other guards that really make things work. Blake Lampman. 13.2 points per game. Um, not an efficient field goal shooter, good three-point shooter, excellent foul shooter at 95.5%. Like, dang. And then Jack, I believe it's uh, Golk, unless that's an I and not an L. 12.2 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, shooting uh, not efficiently from the floor. Again, well from three, and also a good foul shooter. I, ble- I believe it is, it is Jack Golk. 6'3", 215 pounds, senior guard there. DQ Cole is somebody that comes off of the bench. Actually, no, I'm sure, I'm sorry. He does start, but he doesn't play starter minutes. Um, 8.7 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, while shooting 48.3% from the floor. If I'm not mistaken, he's actually one of the shorter players. Yeah, 6'3", in this rotation. Um, and, and he is one of the more effective field goal shooters uh, just on here. Chris Conway, 10 points. Uh, they average 76 a game as a whole. Um, they do a pretty decent job of distributing the basketball. They are last in the nation in defensive assist rate, um, which means Kentucky's probably going to pass the ball around quite a bit. They really struggle turning teams over, blocking shots. Um, they do a good job of keeping teams, teams off of the foul line, which is not an area that Kentucky excels in, so it's not really like something that matters about their game. Um, they give up a lot of stuff from three. 
Like they just give up a lot of shots from three, not necessarily a high percentage. Uh, in conference play, they kind of struggled there. So it'll be interesting to see how Kentucky takes advantage of that. This is an interesting team. It is it is an interesting, interesting team. Uh, and by the way, the, the one player I did not highlight that I, I think I should mention, probably should mention, do you remember Rocket Watts? Do you remember that name? That is the former Michigan State guard, former Mississippi State guard that transferred to Oakland and is playing in his fifth season of college basketball. Rocket Watts played two years at MSU, 2020-2021, then played at Mississippi State for one season. Statistically, very inefficient shooter um, from, uh, uh, from outside the arc, I should say. This year at Oakland, also the same. Not taking a ton of threes, though. Uh, pretty pretty solid assist rate. Turns the ball over like like a lot. <laughs> Corey, I'm just I'm just looking at some of these stats now that I'm finally pulling them up. Like just whenever he's on the floor, he turns the ball over a ton. Um, he has a higher turnover rate than he does an assist rate. That is crazy. I just I just felt like I should mention him. Sorry, I just felt like I should mention him. So, Oakland, interesting team, but a team that I think Kentucky can beat. And again, like I said, as opposed to like the Akrons of the world, as opposed to some of the other 14 seeds, I'll just pull this back up here one more time, as opposed to uh, Colgate or Moorhead State. I mean, honestly, Kentucky would be favored on paper against any of these teams, but I, I think that this one in particular... They're, they're, they're going to have a chance. They're going to have a chance to win and move on to the round of 32. So we'll be talking about this for the rest of the week until it happens. Interesting bracket. It's a it's a weird one, in my opinion. Um, some teams got hosed. Kentucky, I think, has a good draw, but not an insane draw. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, again, you can also hit me on the socials. Join join the ESPN. Link, link in the I'm going to do that thing that you, you, you uh, YouTubers do where they point. Now, link in the description. Scroll down there and click on the link to join the ESPN Bracket Challenge. Um, join up. We got like 40 people in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore and follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and God bless.